Welcome back to another Kinovia tutorial. In today's video, we'll take a look at some of the advanced tools that Kinovia has to offer, including tracking objects and angles and exporting the data to Excel. Let's take a look at using the measurement tools in order to calculate some simple linear kinematics. The first thing we need to do is create a reference measure like we did in the basic tools. Now we can choose a point to track. In this case, we'll use the marker on our sternum. Right click and select track path. You can then go into the configuration and edit the size of the tracking window. In this case, we'll have the window rectangular so it's looking for movement in the vertical direction rather than laterally in the horizontal direction. This allows us to minimize the error of the tracker jumping between markers onto the shoulder or the elbow. We can name the marker and set it to whatever color we want. One way to minimize tracking error is to move through the movement frame by frame, which allows you to adjust the tracker back onto the marker if it moves. This can be quite a tedious process depending on how many frames you're tracking, but it often results in a more accurate track than if you let the tracker process it automatically. All right, and we'll stop our path addition there. Now you'll see the entire path displayed on the screen. You can now go into Linear Kinematics under Tools, Linear Kinematics. You'll notice that by default, you see the speed in pixels per second. This is a current bug in version 9.3, but it can easily be remedied by going into Options, Preferences, Playback, Units, and then just clicking Save. Now when we go back into Linear Kinematics, we should see our speed in meters per second. We can track horizontal position, vertical position, our total distance, total vertical displacement, speed, horizontal velocity, and so on and so forth. Once you choose the measure that you're interested in, in this case, let's export her vertical velocity. We can use either absolute time or relative time, but in this case, we'll use absolute. You can now either export your graph by saving it to file, or you can export your data. So let's export our data. It's best to save it to a file, because if you copy it to clipboard, it will paste with comma-separated variables, and Excel doesn't really treat those very well. We can see that we have our time, and since we exported vertical velocity, this will be velocity in meters per second. So here we can see the graph recreated from what was exported in Kinovia. If we switch to a sagittal view, we can now look at tracking angles. To track an angle, select the angle tool, click the center point of the joint, drag it up to one of the points of connection. In this case, we're gonna go from the center of her knee to her greater trochanter and down to the lateral malleolus. Use the zoom tool to make sure that you have it tracked accurately. And you can choose whether to have a signed or unsigned angle. In this case, we're gonna use standard convention of counterclockwise being positive 
and using signed angles. You can now select tracking and start tracking. We'll try the automatic tracker first. So you'll notice that it picked up the marker from the wrist as it moved across, so we can adjust that. Now we can go back to our frame by frame analysis. and adjust the marker to where it should go. Once it seems to be tracking properly again, we can resume the auto tracking. And we're gonna expect it to pick up again on the wrist. So we'll switch back to manual. And once you finish tracking, you can right click and go to stop tracking. We can now go up into our tools, and this time we'll go into angular kinematics. So we'll see here our angle. We can rename it to knee. And you'll notice here that we have this change between an increasingly positive angle towards 180 degrees, and then it automatically reverts to being negatively signed in the other direction. That lets us know that she's hyperextended and has gone beyond straight. Now, if you don't want to see that, you can simply take off the signing of the angle. And now when you go in here, you'll see a little bit more natural display. Now again, we can save this to a file. Again, we can insert a graph to look at this. And we'll see the same graph that we saw in Kinovia. Now, depending on the data that you're working with, you may or may not be able to rely on the automatic tracker. I find it, a lot of times it's simpler to just track it frame by frame. It prevents it from jumping off too far, and you might spend two or three minutes doing the analysis, but it's better than if you have to go back and adjust every frame. Once Kinovia has determined where the object is, it won't retrack and look for the new position after you correct it if you've already tracked beyond there. So let's say you've tracked it successfully for 20 frames and then it jumps off and it moves another 20 frames where it's not on the object. If you go back and correct the first frame, it won't pick the object up again. It'll continue with the previously tracked path. However, if you go frame by frame, as you adjust it towards the object you're tracking, it will be more likely to continue tracking that object as you go. Another tool you can utilize here is the Spotlight tool. This allows you to focus in on just a certain part of your video. So if you want viewers to focus in just on the knee, we can, we can gray out the background and highlight only the area that's being observed. And just select the tool and press delete if you want to remove it. If we switch back to the frontal view, we can look at a few other tools. So under our models, we have different human models. These can be used to, as a substitute for free body diagrams, and they can just be scaled to the individual's joints. It can be a faster way of representing the free body diagram, depending on how you like to do it. I find these are a little bit more limited than drawing them by hand, but if they work for your case, that's great. And we have two different types that can be utilized. Additionally, if you're working with specific sports like cycling or archery, we have built-in models for bike fit. We have a model for you looking at a top-down view of archery. We can look at a postural assessment. And if you're working with animal models, we have dog models,
and also horse models available. Beyond that, looking in the angle tools, we also have the option for measuring angles relative to horizontal and angles relative to vertical. These can be really useful if you're just looking at a quick change in angle. Again, all of these tools can be tracked as well. Additionally, you have the option of using some observational references, and you can even import your own reference. So in this case, if we wanted to do things relative to uh, a clock face, you can insert a clock there and look at your angular movements. We can load a human skeleton model. And another useful one is going to be the protractor. Any tool that you want to utilize, you can load in as an image and use it as an observational reference. Additionally, you can adjust your coordinate system. So in this case, because we drew our line on an angle measuring for the initial hip, it will automatically tilt our measurements to that axis. So if you want to make your axis horizontal, you need to make sure that you draw a horizontal line and go calibrate. And that will reset your axis. Same thing can be done with a vertical line. And remember to hold shift if you want to draw a purely horizontal or purely vertical line. You can right click and select hide to hide the coordinate system. And then if you're going to be recording a video that is not square or not perpendicular to the object that you're observing or the participant you're observing, you can add in a perspective grid. Now this can allow you to adjust this uh, to any dimensions. This tool, however, cannot be hidden. If you no longer want to use it, you actually have to delete it. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If there's any other examples you'd like, please leave a comment on the video and I'll do my best to incorporate uh, your request in a future video. Keep checking back in as we'll be posting updated videos relating to Kinovia, as well as other topics relating to biomechanics and ergonomics.